Welcome to another rant. I want to call this rant cordless tools. Do you really need them? The next time you go to buy a power tool, it's very, very likely that you'll be buying a cordless. Now, I remember the time when cordless tools used to be gutless toys in their early development when they were working on NICAD batteries and that Makita 7.2 volt drill. It wasn't a serious tool, but they've come on in leaps and bounds or rather fits and starts since then. The development of different battery technologies, the increase in power and the introduction of the brushless motor has really made cordless tools a force to be reckoned with. At their best, they're easily as powerful as mains powered machines. So what's not to like about a cordless tool? Wind the clock back a little bit and look at where they came from. In actual fact, various people say they invented them, Black & Decker and so on. There were various portable power tools around. NASA decided that they were gonna put the first man on the moon. They worked with Black & Decker to develop a drill that they could use on the moon. Why do you need a drill on the moon? When Neil Armstrong set off on that historic mission and he said bye darling I'm off to the moon and she said don't forget your drill what was he doing with a drill on the moon he certainly wasn't putting up shelves he didn't even take a spirit level with him what he was doing is drilling for samples so that wasn't the kind of drill we recognize today that was like a big hammer breaker if you like powered by battery and what they were doing is nicking rock samples that they could take back to planet earth and sell on ebay so you just imagine being the marketing guy at black and Decker when NASA comes calling. What say? We want to take your drill to the moon. Now, I think Black & Decker were a little bit slow on the uptake there because if they've watched a James Bond film, they would have recognized the value of unsubtle product placement. Rolex. Amiga. Beautiful. Surely they could have got their logo on the front. Get the spacesuits sponsored by Pierre Cardin and Nike space boots. In fact, they probably could have paid for the whole mission just through product placement. And if that didn't work, they could have always sold merch. While we're looking at the technology and what Black & Decker contributed to NASA, let's have a look at something else they got involved in with the Gemini Space Project, because I think that was in some ways more impressive. What they needed was an impact driver that would do up nuts. And what they actually needed was something that when they went to do the nuts up, didn't end up spinning the astronaut around in circles. So what they managed to do was design an impact wrench, which is the forerunner to the impact wrench that you use today. In other words, you can do up huge great bolts and nuts and screws and things like that, holding that impact wrench with one hand and it won't cause any kind of force on your wrist. That's kinetic energy. So that's enough of the moon and the space project. Let's get down to Earth. Uh, you tell me that about. The limitations of cordless power tools have always really been the batteries. I mean, NICAD suffered from memory problems. If you recharged it before it was empty, then it was no good and it just forgot that it was a battery. And then we moved on to nickel metal hydride, which was okay in its way, fairly short lived actually. I've got a few nickel metal hydride batteries still kicking around. And then we got on to the lithium ion battery which is ubiquitous. It's been everywhere. It's in your watches, it's in your computers, it's in your phones and even motor vehicles. And therein lies the rub. One problem that they have is it did have a tendency to catch fire. And they managed to get that technology, those computer chips and everything else to even out the drawer and just make sure that it didn't cook and burst into flames. And happy days, we seem to have mastered that technology. Fingers crossed. Are we stuck on lithium iron? Somehow I doubt it because new technology is in the pipeline and it may well be that we'll be looking back on lithium iron the same as we are on all those other old fashioned battery technologies. And they probably come up with batteries that can run a whole week on one single charge. For the foreseeable future, if there is such a thing, we're gonna be looking at lithium iron. Where does most of the lithium come from? Chile, it's coming out of Argentina, Australia. I've done Australia nearly as big as Africa. That's not any kind of statement, that's just my bad drawing. These three continents are supplying the ingredients that we need to put into lithium iron batteries. And that isn't just lithium, that would be cobalt, that would be zinc, that would be copper, 
that would be graphite. And the flaw in all this is that it takes a little country over here called China to process most of the lithium and most of the other ingredients. China has really sewn up the processing for batteries. They put this in place 10 years ago. They were thinking the world is going to move towards electric vehicles. We want to be the linchpin. We want to be the people that everything is being processed. Of course, there are other people doing it, but they're insignificant. <laughs> So China is holding the cards and China has invested an awful lot of money in the Congo. And let's not also forget South Africa is also involved <gasps> in that. They're also producing quite a lot. All these places are heavily invested in by the Chinese. They've built infrastructure, they've built railroads to get those minerals to the ports so that they can ship them into China. Because let's face it, the different countries in Africa haven't really got the resources, haven't really got the capital without the foreign investment to make this thing happen. But it does mean that in a way, China's got them by the short and curlies. Because if they want to put the price up, then China says, you know what, you're in debt to us anyway. You are just going to have to suck it up. Do you think that's a jaundiced view of China? Do you think they're doing it out of the goodness of their heart? Maybe. And again, you see Australia's in a little bit of a position. Although they can produce, although they can mine all these minerals, they still have to go to China for processing. What's going to happen to the prices? As the demand for all these minerals increases, you would expect in a classic economic theory for the price to go up. Demand rises, price goes up. It is written in stone. Except that if you look at the price of lithium ion batteries over the last 10 years, they have absolutely tumbled. Over the last 10 years, they're now down half the price that they were then. Has this resulted in cheaper lithium ion batteries for your power tools? Sadly not. This battery, a 12 amp hour, admittedly a hefty high output battery for Milwaukee. When I bought this, it was 220 quid. They've actually come down slightly in price. You can pick these up for something like 180 quid now because there are more around, but I can't see them going much cheaper than that. So although the raw material prices are dropping somehow, when the cells are sold on, when the people like Samsung and all the other people who make the cells sell them on to the power tool manufacturers and the electric vehicle manufacturers, the price is sky high. Now, nobody really knows what the pricing structure is like with lithium ion because they keep it secret. So the Chinese aren't stupid, but neither are the car manufacturers. The big players like Volkswagen, Mercedes, Tesla have been doing deals with the Chinese for years and they've secured their supplies and they've secured their price for those supplies so that they can carry on making electric cars. But the question we've now got to ask is, have the power tool batteries got the same kind of clout as DeWalt, Makita, Bosch, and all those other people got the same kind of clout as Mercedes and Tesla and so on? If they haven't done those long-term deals, and the price does start to go up. And don't forget, they can also go up and the world demand for raw ingredients may well be that this whole thing starts happening in reverse. And in another 10 years time, we finish up back at record prices for these ingredients. Nobody knows the future as Nostradamus found out. So it would seem likely to me at least that if the world demand for batteries goes up, lithium ion batteries, then the price will also rise. As I said earlier, there is other technology in the pipelines. It may well be that China ends up sitting on a bloody great white elephant. Who knows? But probably if there is new technology, they're going to be involved in that as well. So personally, I don't see battery prices going down. I see them going up. Do you need cordless technology. Do you actually need the battery? Because, okay, I need the battery. I definitely want a cordless drill. I definitely want a cordless impact driver. I definitely want a cordless multi-tool, a cordless chop saw, cordless mitre saw. Do I need things like that? Bench-based machines that don't move around the building. I mean, the whole advantage of having cordless is that you don't drag cords around. Obviously, the portability is the major thing you're looking for. You're paying more money for cordless tools 
vehicles, the batteries do run out and often at a most inconvenient time, you suddenly find that your battery won't take a charge anymore. You're off to the shop and you look at it and you go, how much is that? That's almost as much as the tool cost me. We're not happy about having to replace our batteries and we won't be happy if the price doubles in the next few years. When it comes to buying a cordless tool, personally, I'm going to draw the line at any tool that I don't need to move around the building. So my chop saw, other tools which have got high draw are going to remain plugged in. Mains power tools last longer. A lot of the time they're more powerful, they're cheaper. What's not to like? Get the old extension lead out, plug in, nick the customer's electricity and away you go. I'm Roger Busby. I hope you found that illuminating and interesting. Please discuss it with me below. If you know more about this than I do, and you normally do, give me your insight. Tell me what's going on in the world of batteries. My bet is on a saltwater battery. I think the technology is there. I think it's proven and I think it can work and it will solve an awful lot of problems because nobody can corner the market in salt water. Not even the Chinese.